Good evening, fellow Nexus addicts. Welcome to uh, Season 16 of Nexus Gaming Series, Division C East. My name is Zeno Christ. I am joined here by Arlu. Hello, everybody. We are going to be uh, casting this game here. It's between Cho and Gaul Rescue Rangers and Heavy Greg, uh, a team who, during the uh, I'm sorry, two teams who, during the coin flip, uh, told us that they have quite a bit of history together. Not only are they scrim partners, but they've also played in many a competition together. So, a little bit of a rivalry here. But they are very friendly, though. To, it's to be noted. Sometimes it's all business, but these uh, these these teams definitely know each other, and they were happy to do their coin flip and joke around at the same time. I could sense nothing but animosity. <laughs> <laughs> we're just waiting for ready ups now, and then we'll get into the game. Did you want to go over the uh, map pants real quick? Oh, yeah, probably should do that, right? So on the side of Cho and Gaul Rescue Rangers, <clears throat> we had Garden of Terror and Cursed Hollow banned out, two of the big maps. And on the side of Heavy Greg, we had Battlefield of Eternity and Braxis Holdout banned out, two of the small maps. Uh, playing with Cho and Gaul in the past, we know they like the small brawly maps. Uh, not a ton left right now <laughs> that uh, Heavy Greg have banned two of them out. Uh, but they definitely wanted to stay away from the big macro focus maps. But looks like we're getting into the draft here. Yeah, so the, our first map here is going to be Towers of Doom. And I see this as a brawling map because it's the 4v4 in the bot lane. And it can very, um, it, it can it can be very heavy on the team fight starting from even like level one or a little bit after. Oh, I forgot to mention, Heavy Greg won their first coin flip tonight. Picked and, and decided to go for first pick. Congratulations to Heavy Greg. That's my clap for them. Hopefully they can hear it through the uh, through the cast. No yeah, caster just bias. Comment, <laughs> just a comment on the, the map bands before we really look at the draft here. I think this is a very heavy theme from both teams. Uh, Cho and Gull banning out uh, big macro maps and Greg banning out uh, the, both the two lane maps. Yeah, Braxis is one we see banned pretty often. I'm I'm not surprised about that, but Battlefield Fraternity is definitely a favorite. So, a little bummed we won't get to see that. But an early ban on Alarak, first ban material. Yeah, when you see the Alarak ban, you know that's a target ban. That's not a character you're scared of unless you know they have a player who's good at Alarak. Junk rat, pretty standard on this map. The Emblem Test are not high priority bands, <clears throat> sort of generally, but both have great utility and can, I don't know, they, they can do a lot and Diablo in the right hands can be very scary as well. And no Johanna bands, no Brightwing, none of the, the typical bands you'd see this early, Hog or Blaze, all still available. Yeah, both teams could get quite a bit here. I think we've had that problem in our matches lately. It just seems like right now there's so many banned candidates. Yep, Fala, just definitely a first pick candidate. Yeah, you can't ban them all, you can't pick them all. So it actually kind of makes it nice. You know, there's not just one or two overpowered heroes that everyone's fighting over. It's There's a, there's a small pool of them that, you know, somebody's going to get something good. Let's see what they answer with with their 1-2 pick on the side of Cho and Gaul. Okay. Hmm? Two, two pretty good picks here. Brightwing, good on every comp and every map, basically. And Ming, a great character to pick if you're looking to zone out the objective. An early mouthy old pickup. And there's and the pretty, Joanna. Pretty late for Joanna. I mean, anything past first pick is pretty late for Joanna. Yeah, I'm not super familiar with Heavy Greg's healer pool. Um, I would have expected a healer to get picked up there. There's not a ton banned, um, but Brightwing's already off the table. I guess you still have Anduin and Stukov and, and Rhaegar. 
Um, yeah, I'd say there's a good, if, if their healer has a pretty wide pool, I'd say you can take quite a few healers and they work in quite a few comps. Anduin being one of the number one healers right now, I'd say. So it's a smart ban from there, kind of limiting that pool, especially if you're looking to uh, pick some more lockdown characters, Anduin will counter that pretty hard. However, they do already have the Joanna. Uh, oh yeah, okay, so the Anduin Joanna synergy is off the table now, so all around I think that was a smart choice. Yeah, I'm a little concerned about the early Malthiel pickup. Uh, he's a little squishy. He's great at double soaking, but uh, really easy to gank. Yeah, and also if we look at the CC potential out of uh, Heavy Greg right now, it's a little lacking. Joanna not extremely heavy on CC, and Vala does bring CC on a ranged assassin, which is sort of rare, but we're not going to see any CC out of Malthiel, which is where... Uh, you can pick up some CC on teams. And the Zagara being picked up. Curious if that's going to be their offlane. Uh, if not, Zagara, Li Ming. It, it's unorthodox, I would say. I will fight to my last breath. Oh, we have a Genji and Rhaegar picked up for Heavy Greg. Mm -hmm. So Genji is going to give them that poke potential uh, alongside Joanna, sort of to stall the objective. Rhaegar, kind of like right wing, kind of good on any map in any team. It's possible that Cho and Gaul are going for some sort of bottom push play. Yeah. I mean, unless Imperius goes bottom with the four man, they might just be looking to have Zagara drop um, constant minions on their four and Ming just attack it from out of range. Yeah, I'd say right now the off lane is probably going to be won by Malthiel. Um, he's, he's definitely a faster rotator um as far as double soaking goes so if they are going to play the four man bottom and that's the you know the game plan for both teams uh it should be interesting it, they do they have a lot of poke on the side of cho and gall though so maybe they'll be able to hold genji and uh and johanna at bay go ahead and get into the game here All right, on the side of Cho and Gaul Rescue Rangers, we have Frank on Li Ming, Emski on Imperius, Tazik on May, Fading Cheshi on Zagara, and Saber Moon on Brightwing. And on the side of Heavy Greg, we have Farfanugan on Joanna, Climbable Unk on Vala, Corrosive on Rhaegar, Chimchim19 on Malthiel, and Synthesis on Genji. Looks like we're going to see a 5v5 start in mid lane. Could have gone for some cheese potential with Zagara and Ming in the bottom lane. Looks like Ming's already setting her orbs. The tank's trading some abilities in the front line. Ooh, a pretty good impale onto the Vala, but she vaults out before she can get knocked away by May. Yeah, Vala a little safer. She doesn't have the game at level 1. She decided to go for a Q build here. Got real low before going to the gate. Ooh, May is actually not in a great position here. Gonna use her unstoppable. Probably has a rush available. Rushes before Brightwing teleports, both of them. Gonna get out to safety. If that teleport went on off before that rush, Brightwing probably would have been in some more trouble, but they both got away pretty easy there. And we do see Imperius in the offlane. Ming's already throwing orbs at the bottom gate here. And they actually have a Kind of a double wave set up. Yeah, so far Chongal is in a good position. Uh, not a lot of threatening damage on the side of Heavy Greg to push them off. Right now, or this early on, Genji's really not, you know, much to contend with. Uh, I'm gonna see both teams trading out their siege camps. A little scuffle in the top lane. Looks like Imperius had the jump on Malthiel. And I think they're going to pick up that kill. Oh, and he's able to take him down. And in response, Heavy Greg noticing that they must have had to send people to pick up that pick. They're going to invade the camp. They've got three people sitting on top of it with May trying oh. to hold the fort. It's not going to work. That means we have six Good. pumpkins walking in on the side of uh, 
Heavy Greg he heading towards Chungal's towers. Three had just gone in. It was a good decision making from both teams there, Brightwing recognizing they could pick up a kill, teleporting, but also Heavy Greg retaliating. Sometimes yeah. you just say, oh, that's bad for us. We better, you know, regroup or something. But they, they took initiative there, and that was smart and paid off. And yeah, they were able to get quite a bit of structure damage. It put all those uh, Lee Ming orbs. <laughs> They're kind of useless now. Mm. Well, Genji, oh, good volley. Get... Yep, we got a poly on him. Unfortunately, I think... I think for Chon Gold, they're going to have some trouble with this Genji because Mei doesn't have any direct CC. Ming's not a point and click character. The best they have is, you know, Polymorph, but I don't see how the follow up damage is really going to connect. But I think we'll just have to wait and see on that. Looks like in the bot lane, Juana's just zoning for her team. Trying to keep the May away, but she's just gonna run in. Doesn't care much about what Joanna's doing. It's now gonna be a 4v4. Brightwing pretty low on mana. Everybody else pretty healthy. Genji diving in, utilizing his mobility to get out. Ooh, Brightwing a little bit of a bad position, but kind of baited that Vala there. Oh, and we have a full health Imperius joining the fight. Yep. They're gonna pick up two kills on this. So we're going to see two towers for the side of Cho and Gull Rescue Rangers. Yeah, good on Imperius coming down. It was the only way they were going to get that tower, I think. Or at least they made it happen a lot quicker. That's great. Yeah, without him, perhaps Genji could have delayed for a lot longer. Without that point-and-click CC, they do have it with the Brightwing. But I don't think it's extremely threatening from the DPS. So he could have potentially indefinitely delayed that. Yeah, I'd mentioned it earlier, you know, Imperius has a hard time double soaking. They did have to send Zagara mid to cover that uh, that lane for a little bit. It's on our way back down now. I think that's pretty smart. The siege potential out of Heavy Greg I don't think is astounding. Genji's not a very fast racer. Or, excuse me. Um, can't just burn a structure. Vala's kind of scary, but has to be close range to do so. Yeah, Imperius did pick up the Holy Fervor at level 7. That's going to make him a little bit more effective at double soaking. Um, you know, he should be able to keep up with Malthio a little bit more now. Hopefully Zagar is able to stay with her team. Um, I think they really need her there if they're going to, you know, make any sort of kill happen. She's the only really semi-consistent damage that they have. Oh, Vala's in a little bit of a bad position, getting cleansed by the Rhaegar. Probably saved her right there. Thanks for kind of trading cooldowns into each other. Oh, well, that John is pretty low. Gets slowed by the May. That Blizzard, unfortunately, is not going to land the stun. Just got. We out. see Malthiel rotating down. He might set up a gank here. He's in kind of a bad spot. He's in between four of their teammates. Yeah, let's see if May can set something up. Mm, oh, yeah. Teleports behind her. Nothing personal. It was smart. He teleported back towards his team. They relented. Okay, we have Imperius on the enemy tower. A little caught, a little bit caught out. Oh, and no Z from the bright wing. Yeah, unfortunate positioning there. And Zagar just going to get theirs. Jonna almost had that interrupt. Trade. <laughs> almost had it. And both teams back on the way to the bottom. Pretty even position for both teams. We do see a level lead right now for Heavy Greg getting that level 10. They got to be careful here. I think they're going to get caught. Joanna's going to sweep up this Zagara. She should be the target. Unfortunately, looks like they got peeled a little too much. Rhaegar had to back to base. They actually lost more health than they took from Cho and Gull right there. Yeah, the Blood Shield might have been a little too early. It didn't look like the DPS were really ready to follow it up yet. And I think the initial target was Mei, which I don't think they really had much of a chance killing. No, not necessarily. <laughs> so the, the lower duration stun went on to the back line and wasn't able to isolate them long enough. We see Brightwing hanging out with Imperius right now. I'm not sure uh, wh when that rotation happened. Ooh. See Genji walking up. Ooh, getting a lot of value out of that shield. 
and he's not giving up. He is going to go ahead and kill that Zagara, however, dying for his trouble. I don't think he got a reset on his uh, on his mobility skill. So we get a trade one for one. Yeah, it was too bad. I was hoping to see some Genji things. Saw them, it just didn't pay off quite the way he thought it would, I think. Well, I'm pretty satisfied with Genji dying. <laughs> yeah, anytime an Overwatch character dies, it's a good thing. Yep. All right, we see the camp play coming out from Heavy Greg. Pretty good timing on this. Joan Gold not going for theirs. I don't think they're really going to have time before they're going to have to contest this. Joanna walking up. Probably going to see that camp walk into the bottom four, so they're going to get some value there. Ooh, Imperius getting the stun onto Malthiel. Unfortunately, Genji diving in. Joanna's in a back spot. Combo. But all that damage dropping onto Joanna, kind of unexpected to see her go down first in the fight. Ball is low in the back line. The Z just now coming out. Great stun from Imperius onto the Genji, but his team's on the other side. Oh, that poly just a little too late. And he's able to escape, basically taking no damage. Take a look at these pumpkins. They did end up walking in. And they should be able to clear the rest out. I think only one went in, actually, looking at it. I believe the rest of the gate and both towers were down at that point, so. You see Genji bothering this bright wing a little bit, getting polymorphed. Showing a goal, rescue rangers. Mercenary camp now walking into bot lane. Looks like they're trading some abilities into each other. Both teams basically full health. The level 13 coming out for Heavy Greg first, however, Chow and Gaul about to pick up theirs. Yeah, I'd like to see Heavy Greg uh, clear out this Sapphire camp and then try to go for an engage. Uh, Rhaegar looks like he's actually full backing. I'll play this slow, I guess. How feels like hovering between mid and bot. Looks like he's deciding what to do. Uh, I think he was clearing out Zagara creep, actually. Not oh, really the right sense. person for it, but I mean, if, if you gotta clear it, you gotta clear it. Well, we see the Genji come in getting Polymorph. Some damage falling onto him, but really not not much. That bless shield. Yep, just not much connecting. We see another snowball come out from May. Oh, and the gank from Malthiel coming Ooh. out. Getting extremely low on the May, but a great four man uh, Ma. devouring Maw. The Blizzard was a little too late. So they did not get stunned. However, Genji does fall, and it looks like oh, nope. There's the Iron Skin. Juan is probably going to walk out of this with about half HP. Yeah, it just seems like when the Blast Shields are going out, there's not enough damage to follow it up. They need quick, decisive plays to follow up the Blast Shields. They're just not happening. Yeah, this is interesting. I thought they were going to have more trouble with the Genji than they are, but I think they're doing well on retreating as soon as he comes in. And without much backup from his team, he's not getting any value, especially because he gets polymorphed for a duration while he's in there, so he doesn't get to deal damage. And because of how sort of, um, you know, there's not a lot of distance between the structures on either side, so he can't really chase people down on this map unless they're fighting over an objective. He doesn't really get that value of having that high mobility if they're just going to retreat to their structure every time. And another blessed shield, however, yeah. again, the damage just not quite there. Zagara only taking about 20 or 30% of her health, and the counter engage from the May, Rager getting to half health, and in fact, Joanna getting a little bit low too. Genji now joining the fight, he might just go straight in, bother the back line. Yep, here he goes. We don't have the Brightwing here for the poly, however, he didn't really get any damage right there. Imperius joining the fight, pulling out his ult. Oh, and they oh, get a snowball no. onto the Rhaegar. This should be a dead Rhaegar, and they pick him up really fast. Genji trying to peel a little bit. It's not really what his character is designed to do. Couldn't really do anything for Rhaegar. Yeah, again, that, that Bless Shield's just not connecting. Um, I should say it's connecting. There's just no damage to follow it up. It need to be a little more restrained with that. Uh, wait for the DPS to be there. A, a good X-Strike and, and Vala Q combo would probably... Help with that, help him get a little bit of value. But so far, no value on the Blush Shields. Yeah, and I'd say as this game progressive, I think we're gonna see the kind of power come out for 
Cho and Gaul, we see the power spike talent, the percent damage from Zagara. But maybe I'll hold that thought because we have a little bit of a fight breaking out. Genji taking a lot of damage and again, really not doing anything with those um, engages he's trying to pull. Vala getting completely isolated. Maybe Ming can catch up and Orb flying oh. takes her out. Up oh, and we see the Malthiel getting isolated. The Bless Shield does come out from Joanna, but it's too little too late. And they're going to be able to take this tower. I think this was two towers for them on this uh, objective. Uh, did Rhaegar just respawn or was he just not there? I um, see him with full health and full mana. He must have respawned because he died pretty late before that objective, I think. That's true. Looks like uh, Cho and Gaul are going to be able to get this bottom fort pretty handily. Yep, they do have the Zagar and the Ming. They can keep poking this from a range. They don't have all four for defense on the side of Heavy Greg right now. They just got to clear those minions out a little bit. And then here comes the Banelings, here come the orbs. I think they're just going to whittle it down. Joanna trying to block some. We now see Vala joining, but Imperius is coming down. Ooh, the Imperius oh. comes through the wall, gets the, the Vala. Wow, Beautiful. followed up with the Polymorph. Does get cleansed, but it's not enough. Wow, a huge extract from Genji, though. Ah, and the heals coming up from Brightwing. Uh, we see a multi-stun from the Imperius. Not much damage connects with it, though, and there's the tower flip. It's not going to be a factor for another second here, but... Oh, my Ooh. goodness. Hopefully this doesn't save him. Wow, picking up three kills on bottom right there. Yeah, Imperius coming down was so clutch. That was a beautiful play by him over the wall. Yeah, absolutely. The orders rise again. And Vala is the one you really don't want to see that get engaged on, at least if you're... Heavy Greg, I think a lot of their damage, you know, goes away when Vala dies. Genji can do a lot, but I don't know. He's a little bit like Ming or other mages where, you know, he can pull out a lot of damage, but he can't necessarily 100 to 0 somebody. So when Vala's out of the fight, I think it's going to be really hard for them to pick up any kills. A little bit of a scuffle in the top lane between Malthiel and Imperius. Oh my Ooh. goodness, a lot of damage coming out from Imperius. The life steal is a factor in the health gain, getting that stun. Oh, oh no. Geez. That's unfortunate. Well, Cho and Go are still able to pick up 10 tower shots during that time. Right now, a boss would win it. Um, yep. So the, it looks like Heavy Greg is actually very aware of that. They're going to go ahead and do the boss themselves, try to get that off I the map. I think this makes sense. They they know that Cho and Gaul is in the bot lane, so they can just get this off the map, no problem. Especially with Imperius dead, there's basically no one here to even think about contesting this. Yeah, they, they have to worry about those mercenaries walking in on bot lane, though. They're going to have to get back to bottom pretty quickly. Very smart to take that off the map. Uh, this could be the game here, though, if they're not able to clear out these sappers. Malfeo's going to go right Ooh. behind his team. Yeah, we're going to have to see a collapse pretty quickly here from Heavy Ooh. Greg. A little bit of a misrotation there, unfortunately. He really had nowhere to retreat to, and his team had to rotate through a fort to get to him. Joanna had been taking tower shots for a few seconds now, racking up that armor. Vala getting isolated. Oh, and the snowball doesn't connect. It's been quite a few times where that snowball just barely misses. Brightwing barely getting out of that X strike before the final hit comes out. Joanna not having enough health to really step up. Looks like they were able to take out those pumpkin sappers. Yeah, they have a little bit of time to reset. Joanna needs to get some health back. Uh, you know, if they can poke out right now and try to get this four back, that's the best thing they can do because they really can't push up on this next uh, this next objective. Yeah. And with Malfield dead, I mean, they're kind of in a checkmate position here. It'd take some astounding play or some sort of miracle for them to push both through this four and through five heroes. Malthiel is going to come up, but I think it's going to be too late. They're going to have to start a fight without him. Joanna's not really that healthy. Genji's running Genji. the distraction. Yep, he's on the other side of the world. All of his mobility's down. There's the Brightwing Polymorph. I think he's going to get taken out. Nope. Maze running interference uh, on the opposite side. And Heavy Greg is now just joining the fight. Joanna falling, taking too much damage earlier. Stun going out onto Rhaegar, followed by the Polymorph. Um, I think Malfiel died in the meantime. Rhaegar falling. Now it's just Vala. Looks like she's just gonna Get a give up the ghost there. A little more stat padding at the end there. Of this 
and we're going to see this game go to Cholengal Rescue Rangers. That's a great game. Oh, let's take a look at our stat screen here. Li Ming, uh, with a pretty wide margin for uh, top hero damage. Uh, wow. You know, yeah. her, her and Zagar at the top of uh, Li Ming having 68,000. Zagar at 62. Uh, the highest on the side of Heavy Greg was Genji at 40,974. I just don't think that they had the tools to step up and get to those poke heroes in the back line without putting themselves in danger. Which, which happened pretty much every time Genji went in. You know, he went in, he'd get polymorphed and uh, pretty much just get nuked. Um, which is always a danger to play. You know, but a, a problem with playing Genji into Brightwing. She counters him pretty uh, pretty handily. Um, you know, outside of that, really weren't able to put out the damage that they needed to be threatening. Um, you know, hopefully they're able to, to pull something out in game number two. Yeah, I think Cho and Gull played their comp pretty well. In retrospect, they actually have a pretty nice comp for a defensive and poke situation where Zagar and Li Ming can just kind of retreat while throwing things. Ming uh, made a good decision by taking Calamity at level 7, able to get consistent damage onto the Genji, especially while he's polymorphed. And I wish I would have paid more attention to what Mei was doing because she was probably running a little bit of interference um, against uh, Vala and Rhaegar. So when Joanna th would throw the shield, I'm guessing May would throw out her blind and um, uh, maybe the blizzard as well to stop the damage from getting there. I think if it would have been a different map, the Heavy Greg composition might have been a little bit better, especially like on the Cursed Hollow or something where they could really run down characters during the objective. But I don't think they really got the opportunity on this map. No, I agree with you 100% on that one. May did a great job, though. She was always in... Uh in everyone's way anytime damage was coming through. Mm -hmm. Let's see where they're going to be taking us for map number two. Waiting on a, uh, <laughs> a new lobby to get set up. Yeah, I would definitely like to see Heavy Greg uh, maybe move into something a little bit more aggressive. Uh, Cho and Gaul, if they keep up what they're doing now, I think they're going to have no problem. I consider the team they ran pretty aggressive, just not... just couldn't really overcome um, the Brightwing and the May. Yeah, I, I actually think they, they probably could have used a little bit beefier of a Bruiser if they had like a Blaze or a, even a Hogger. Somebody mm -hmm. that can be a little bit more disruptive. When Malthiel came down, he added some damage, uh, but not enough threat you know there was no worry of a cc coming out there was no it was kind of just oh malthios here we can just kill him yeah and, and on that topic with with a blaze or maybe even a hogger with more lockdown on the bright wing or zagara maybe that could have given more time for vala to catch up genji was always sort of there but he would instantly get polymorphed um but with another threat like hogger um horda pulting in or something like that or maybe a sonya leap uh things could have looked a lot different yeah, I don't necessarily know that Malthio was a bad pick, but maybe into that team it was. I, I did think they took it a little early, like uh, I mentioned in the draft. Usually mm -hmm. you see them a little later on. Um, you know, they were, especially going into Brightwing, I would think that you'd want something a little bit uh, more malleable. Really easy to die in a polymorph window. We have a lot of uh, Cho and Gaul Rescue Rangers supporters here in the uh <clears throat> in the stream oh it's a strong showing i mean these are not unorthodox heroes maybe zagara but you know this isn't a comp or a type of play style you see in every match with a really defensive kind of patient long range i mean zagara ming at first glance i wouldn't consider that a good combination but it really worked for them in this match so we are going to be heading to Alterac Pass that was selected by Cho and Gaul Rescue Rangers with Heavy Greg opting for first pick. Now, I used to not like this map so much. Uh, 
<laughs> I'm actually a, have grown a lot more more fond of it as of uh, late. Yeah, I like this map a ton. I guess I prefer Cursed or Garden over Altered Pass. Just I don't know, maybe even thematically. Altered Pass is a little barren, only two camps, and I, I think the uh, the mud patches that slow you down just sort of annoy me. I don't really like playing around them. Oh, that's but nice that's all thing. my personal opinion. Yeah, that's a nice thing about playing a new brack. I just blow right past them. I don't even have to think <laughs> about them. <laughs> yeah, you said. Well, this is going to be a, a macro map. Who did you say picked this? Uh, Chowangal Rescue Rangers. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this will be more macro heavy than towers for sure. And these are the. Well, actually, they banned macro maps, so. Not exactly sure what the train of thought is, but maybe we'll get a, a glimpse of that during the draft. Yeah, I'm a little surprised. I think I, what would have been left on the table? Dragonshire, uh, Infernal Shrines. I think Sky Temple's open this season. Mm -hmm. uh, Volskaya. I was going to say it's funny. I used to favor Volskaya over this map. I actually think I like Alterac Pass better than Volskaya now. I don't think Volskaya is very popular. I feel like I don't. We don't plan that map much with our games. Yeah, I used to love it though. Get the robot fight over the point. Uh, lately, it just doesn't hold the same appeal to me. I've always thought the objective on the map is rather weak, but maybe I think that's partially because I don't know how to use it correctly. But that's a discussion for a different time. Looks like we're just waiting for one more on the side of Heavy Greg to get into the into the draft here. Yeah, we should be starting within a few minutes. Did we see a roster swap on the side of yeah. Heavy Greg here? Yeah, I think Snack is a roster change. Well, well, the only reason I notice is because um, Heavy Greg has portrait synergy, which means they all use the same portrait, and one of them now doesn't. Wait, was Snack on the on the team last time? I don't remember. I don't think I introduced Sith or Snack. When I see his name, I just think of that meme. I'm a snack. I actually don't know what you're talking about. Oh man, it's before your time. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll have <laughs> That's to send. Very possible. I'll, I'll send it to you after the the cast. Maybe I'll live stream it after this. Let me look at our. I want to see here. Yeah, synthesis and Chim Chim 19. Looks like they had a double roster swap. Interesting. And Heavy Greg says they're ready, so these two uh, two newcomers look like they're they're here to stay. I wonder if they, you know, our our team we have a core five, um, but I don't know how other teams really operate. Maybe they're just rotating in their players, or maybe they think they, you know, they have some some heroes or play styles that'll work well um, against. Uh, 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 Cho and Gaul are, are on this map in particular. Hmm. Or, or maybe the, or maybe one of them is not on this team. We uh, seeing something in the draft that doesn't look quite right. Yeah, I'm a little confused. Wait a second, is this three roster changes? No. So, so, oh yeah, this, so this, synth this, Synthesis is back. <laughs> yeah, but they, they still switched out two. Oh, jeez. Kind of wish I had this screen up now on the, on the cast, that way people knew what we were talking about. It's a complete yeah, so, cluster. 
Yep, so we just had another swap. However, it was two players who were in the last match. So we still have two new players um, that weren't in last match on the side of Heavy Greg. <laughs> All right, looks like we're actually... <laughs> looks like we actually have it figured out now. Looks like we're going to be heading into the game here in a few seconds. Well, that was an interesting lobby. Worked out in the end. Yeah, we got 10 players in here. We're fine, I guess. All right, so uh, t typically on a map like Alteric Pass, you'd see some sort of global or global macro potential get banned out in the early phase, but maybe we'll see that Alarak ban again. Yeah, I think uh, if, if I was Heavy Greg, I would definitely be banning right wing this time around. Um, you know, even if it wasn't necessarily, you know, something they're scared of, uh, they know they play it. Right wings, like you said last game, great on every map. Uh, with every comp and every draft, <clears throat> and especially here, she can just be anywhere and and give your team a boost. Same well, bands. So far, we're yep, we're seeing the same bands as last game. I would say Diablo is not as much as a factor on this map as he is on towers. Was Walla the same band? No, no, no. They picked oh. Walla last time. They first picked her last game. So maybe they're going to go for something more higher priority than Valla. Maybe they're going to take a pretty Bright high Wing. priority pick. And there's a task star again. So we see most of the same bands. I'm not sure who they banned last time and trade for Valla. Um, I can't remember. It was, oh, they did it was junk rat. rat. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I mean, Vala and Junkrat kind of interchangeable in terms of the priority. Junkrat feels a different role, however, still a very strong character. Okay. Going for the Leaming we, again. Yeah, but this we see them pick up the, the Ray Guards of the Bright Wing. That's a little surprising to me. Maybe they're thinking he'll fill, fit the team better. Maybe it's a denial. Um, Possible. I, I, I don't know that the Rhaegar was particularly effective last game. Oh, we see a swap. I don't think... I, I would take a Brightwing over Rhaegar. Rhaegar's very strong, but Brightwing brings a lot of utility in terms of both global presence and CC healing output. It's hard for me to say which one's better, but I don't know. Brightwing just seems very strong to me. Yeah, Maybe I'd, it's... I'd, I'd have to say Brightwing. The, she has a mass cleanse. I mean, she's she has so many tools at her disposal. I know uh, our teammate Fenrir would say Rhaegar because he, he's very into getting camps and you know playing the macro part of the map. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're joking about that a little bit, but uh, that is a good point because the camp is a pretty important factor on this map. And so far, we don't really see anybody on Heavy Greg that can deal with it. But that can often be picked up on the Bruiser slot. Hogger's still available, and he's the king of this map and, you know, taking that camp. My blades are yours. Sonia, she's pretty good on the camp too, actually. It's not something you see picked up very often, but... She can do it relatively quickly, especially after seven. 
if well, she I'm decides to go see... into that. Yeah, I'm interested to see what bruiser they pick up on the side of Heavy Greg. I think that'll kind of, I don't know, maybe reorient their comp from last game. Mm, oh, there's the blaze. blaze. Yeah, I could see, uh, Blaze does the camp at a reasonable speed. I guess if Junkrat goes with him, they could probably tear through it pretty quick. Uh, same thing with Mayav, actually. Mayav's pretty good on this camp with, uh, if she takes nice momentum. At level one and almost an identical team out of Chongal Rescue Rangers. Well, not quite. They they switch the healer and the bruiser. I think that's pretty significant. However, Sonya and Imperius, not the same character, but kind of the same beats. They both have a CC. Yeah, I think They're of both them. Pretty tanky. I think They're of them as very similar. Heal. Yep. On the opposite side, so we see a more brawl oriented team. Maev, Blaze, Joanna really just want to get in there. And I think that'll work pretty well against the Rhaegar, Hey Sonya, Zagara, and Ming aren't really going to be wanting to be in the brawl, though. So we're going to have to see those flanks come out from Heavy Greg. And I guess Junkrat kind of works with any team, but not exactly the mage you would see that would want to capitalize on a brawl. I could see him getting isolated or maybe, I don't know, being a little bit too slow to pick up much damage. But he has pretty long range, so I think that'll just depend on the play style. <clears throat> on the side of Cho and Gaul Rescue Rangers, we have Emski playing Sonya, Frank on Li Ming, Tazik on Mei, and Fading Cheshi on Zagara. On Heavy Greg, we have Snake on Blaze, Synthesis on... Oh god, who is this? I'm gonna have to open up the tab screen. They're all stacked on each other. Synthesis on Mai Ev, Corrosive on Brightwing, Farfanugan on Joanna, and Synth on Junkrat. Joanna's playing smart, staying inside of the core. Oh, no, she decided to come out. <laughs> yep. We're going to see. So with the Blaze and the 5v5, it's a pretty explosive team fight potential. However, May can put her Blizzard down on these choke points, sort of negating. Well, we see the Blizzard go out kind of early. Blaze might have an opportunity to find some sort of stun here, but looks like they're playing pretty defensively, and Blaze is already rotating out of the lane. He's probably going to try to get that wave of soak early. Hopefully go pick up his siege camp the second that it spawns. Already 25 seconds away from those camps spawning, which I think most people will agree is like the main objective on this map. Mm -hmm. We see the rotations now coming out. 3v3 staying mid. Zagara versus Maeve. Maeve in the bottom lane. Bruiser's in the top lane. I think we're going to see it's going to be a little bit boring for a minute here. I don't think either team is going to do anything very um, risky or explosive yet. Junkrat heading to the campsite. Looks like uh, Maev and Zagar were trading a little bit of the damage. Both of them have already used their tap. Ming covering topside as Sonya goes to the camp. Junkrat having a hard time with this camp. Brightwing did have to go over to him, give him a hand. Yeah, that makes sense. Neither of those characters you would think great at camp clear. Rager hanging out the, the bottom lane for now. Looks like they're going to get a little bit of a push going. That's pretty smart, again, with Zagara against my Ev. We do see them uh, on the side of Heavy Greg grouping up a little bit in the mid lane. Starting to push their bruisers right. through. Right wing teleporting into the bottom lane. Not much to get off of that though yeah, it looks like both camps were cleared out actually no Sonya held her camp uh, so now the Greg's gonna have to contend with that a little bit mid they do have three people there with Junkrat should be able to clear that out pretty easily yep. well, they're a little bit outnumbered Rhaegar's half health I don't think that camp's gonna make it past the halfway point we see Sonya going slam build, Rhaegar standard totem build, Ming teleport build, taking Aether Walker and Dominance. You don't always see those talents, especially with the zoning on this map. I'd expect Ming to go and orb the orb talent at level four. Yeah, a little surprised. I guess they're going to count on Zagara to be able to do that. Just send in her Bane links. May holding her level four. I'm not sure what that's about. I'm not really familiar with May's talents. Well, she's got an icing talent at level four, which is 
usually the most common. It gives a cooldown reduction. And she went for spell armor on her uh, on her D. That would be when she turns into a nice, you know, uh, popsicle. Hmm, Jonah going hold your ground at level four. I think typically we see the slow talent. Maybe anticipating a lot of damage. Yeah, it, the Zagara it, percentage it could be a factor once they get to sixteen. Yeah, I think that that and the iron skin last two seconds longer. Maybe to walk through those blizzards, or, you know, to to be able to get out of some of those stickier situations and the chokes. We see neither team going for the objective yet. I'd say Heavy Greg has an opportunity to push it. They have their camp walking significantly sooner than Cho and Gaul, but they're just now rotating up to it. Yeah, Zagara's getting actually quite a bit of damage done in the bottom lane without getting up there. Um, she was winning pretty handily against Maiev. We do see Heavy Greg start channeling. I think the... that's a good call from them. Ooh, and the blaze just barely not connecting with that jet propulsion. Ming missing a couple skill shots. Junkrat causing some, some trouble in the back line, however. It's now a 4v4. Both from the bottom lane are rotating up. Blaze getting low, getting a pretty big heal from Brightwing. The objective is still ticking down, though. Oh, my, I've just got out of Rhaegar, there. Rhaegar now channeling it. Two uh, heroes low on the side of Heavy Greg. They're going to have to back out. That's a pretty good position for Heavy Greg. They didn't get the objective. However... They can reset here, regain a little bit of health. And I think they've got a little bit of a de better defensive structure with their front line. Blaze finding a pretty big stun onto them. Maiev diving in, not a lot of health though. Couldn't do a whole lot before having to dive back out. Well, lucky for them, May has almost no mana. She's kind of has to back off in this situation. Big stun and from another, Blaze. Yep, another jet propulsion, pretty big. However, the damage just not quite connecting. Blaze getting down to 100 health, retreating. Joanna getting low. I'm getting low. Oh. oh my god. Down to 70 health. You see, that's why, you know, my Evan, um, Sylvanas, I've seen plenty of times where they do that thing where they throw their teleport and walk the other direction and just die <laughs> because they walked <laughs> into the enemy team. But, I mean, this is a pretty strong position from Cho and Gaul now. We see Joanna having to full back. I think my Ev full backed. Blaze is going to try to pick up some EXP real quick. They need yeah. to get back on this. Looks like they're kind of set up to do it. I mean, Rhaegar has no mana. None. I don't even know if he has enough to heal at the moment. Oh. Yep. His last heal just went out, and the stun coming out onto May. She might have the chance Ooh. to rush away. Might have dying in the back line. They couldn't drop enough damage onto that May. And Blaze walking away with about 100 health again. Sonya in the back line. Junkrat's really their only hope to poke this out. Looks like he doesn't have anything available. A Z onto the Joanna. Are we taking about half health and damage as they channel the last of this objective. I'm, I'm shocked that uh, Cho and Gaul were able to hold up for that long. <laughs> really low on resources, they were able to manage them well um, and, and able to stay in the fight long enough to get that extra six seconds they needed on the objective. See, Rhaegar yeah. still hasn't gone back, no mana. He looks like he's going to go for a tap. He's waiting for it to come up, there it is. I'm not sure if the siege camp was up for Heavy Greg. Maybe they missed the opportunity to tag that before the objective came out, or maybe it wasn't up yet. I think both were up, actually. Uh, they were just focused on trying to keep people off that objective. Well, it looks like they're clearing mid pretty fast. Nobody's in the bot lane to contest my of clearing. Similar for top lane. I'm not sure Cho and Gaul's going to get a ton off of this. Looks like they're focusing on mid, though. I think it's, it's definitely going to fall 5v3. Yeah, I would say that's the most important lane in the game. Um, you know, if they're going to prioritize anything, it's a good idea to prioritize the middle four. Did get a little bit of damage on the bottom one. Uh, I think it looks like Li Ming and Rhaegar are already on their way down to, to sort of clean that up. Oh, Li Ming, I'll pick to go to the camp. I think they were level 10. Well, I guess I'm not 100% certain. I think they had Riptire available. I might have liked to see that come out just to help defend that fort. It's possible they could have pushed them off of it in a um, in an ideal situation, but probably wasn't possible. So we see both games, Ming going Wave of Force. The first game, I thought she took it against Genji because disintegrating to Genji can mean a dead ally. Um, with his uh, shield ability. 
reflecting damage. But, I don't know. Some Mings prefer Wave. I prefer Disintegrate. I haven't played Mings so much. Oh, looks like I missed something in the bottom lane. Sagara dying to my Ev. Oh, Sonya might get punished, though. Yeah, we see a collapse, but I think Junkrat's just not going to be able to... Well, if I spoke a little bit too soon, I was going to say I don't think he's going to be able to put out the damage, but dropping Sonya very low. I think... Okay, so Sonya used Leap, uh, I think, during that fight with the Zagara. Didn't have that to get out. The rotation from Heavy Grid coming down. Starting to get 3v3. Pull. Yeah, well, we saw a little bit of that. We have a force get value. However, I don't think uh, they had any stuns available for that Rhaegar. I think he would have walked away regardless. And another objective coming up so soon. It looks, looks like, like on the... the... Oh, go ahead. It looks like on the side of Cho and Gaul, uh, Zagara is just wherever the team fight isn't. I think she's side pushing right now. But there's a fight going on in the bottom lane. Yep, we saw the ice will go out, kind of whiffed on every character. May getting a little bit low. I don't remember if she already used her unstoppable. Wow, she interrupted that heal. Maev extremely low. Oh, teleporting the other side. She might be able to get away. Another Calamity drops on her. Oh, Getting missed the school. containment oh, disc. HP. One more, and there it is. One more Calamity takes her out. Yeah, Maev missed a, cal a containment disc. That actually would have saved her there. So it's pretty important. jogal has got to decide what to do. Looks like they're going to set up on the objective. Junkrat does have a trap set up. Joanna um, uh, pokes it out twice using both charges. Junkrat jumping to the other side. He's going to be able to poke this out for a long time now. Chooses uh, not maybe. to. <laughs> yep, uh, that's a little, little unexpected. Maybe it looks like he was waiting for his trap to come back up. Didn't want to. Yeah, he did not think the, the cooldown reduction on it. So. Mm, we see Sonya getting. Opened up on Junkrat using the Rip Tire. Just sort of start this engage. It's getting a little low. Tap health. Okay, he blows it up on a couple. Oop, Rhaegar getting kind of isolated. Ice oh. coming out, unfortunately, missing again. I think I saw the Ancestral come out. Containment disc out onto the Sonya. Uh, May going into stasis. Oh. Wow, and that Blizzard missing everybody. Joanna getting unstoppable. We see Blaze getting really low again. Ming getting taken out by the Maev in the back. Sonya getting taken out in the front. Unfortunately, they were able to secure the objective. Yep, they were not able to stop them from getting that objective. Blaze and Maya have real low. Maya's gonna have to tap and try to clear this out. Uh, May and Rhaegar are actually heading bottom to push with that. I don't know if Maya's yeah. gonna be able to take care of that on her own with both of them there. I don't think so, and I think this is pretty smart, securing this bottom forward. It's already taken some damage from that Zagara push, and Zagara being in the top side, trying to put pressure on that. And we see, oh, look at this on the side of Heavy Greg. They're kind of just sitting and waiting for that Zagara to push up so they can run straight in. Uh, Zagara's got no idea that they were just sitting there waiting. Oh, getting the Maw out, however, connected with the Jet Propulsion. Ooh, that... Uh, Wow. Yep. Having to use an ult. I think that uh, that trap was a little bit more trouble than it was worth. Yeah, I would say so. Junkrat ended up going down to a great Sonya leap uh, counter engage. Yeah, and I was I was a little bit concerned that that Zagara was going to go straight over the wall, making it even harder to secure that kill on her. Probably She probably would have got away if that would have been the case. And with that kill, it looks like Cho and Gaul is going to try to secure this top fort. Joanna showing up. I don't. Oh, and here comes Maev straight to the back line, getting that pull onto the Rhaegar. Ancestral coming out, getting that full Ancestral containment disc. I think that's smart. They've got plenty of health to reposition themselves. The silence going out. Jet propulsion oh. barely missing. Great wave of force value on that Blaze. Oh, unfortunately, May is in a little bit of a bad position. Ming able to get out with the cooldown reduction from her level 1 or her level 7. I'm not sure which. Or no, sorry. It would have been her level 1 or her level 13. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, she went full teleport this time. Mm -hmm. I think that makes sense into sort of a heavy melee. Getting a lot of value out of that Calamity, getting that shield for extra survivability at level 16. Yeah, Sonya was able to finish off the bottom 4. Don't know if you saw that there. Uh, Sonya is just going to clear out that mid siege camp as we speak while the scuffle's still going on 5v3 in the top lane. Mm -hmm. 
I think Heavy Greg should look to get some value here. They can't really be all five in a lane on this map without making something happen. They're missing some soak elsewhere. They're missing priority. Um, looks like they did get that camp and nobody really moving to get it on the side of Chuangal, so they do have that advantage right now. Yeah, they're Looks moving like they're as five. That into the mid. This is actually probably pretty smart. They need to start getting this gate down and... Oh, May move. actually using her mobility. I think she's a viable target now if they wanted to open up on her, but they opt to just back up a little bit. What is that skill called? Icing. Icing. I <laughs> That's not what I expected it to be called. I, I expected it to be called, like, you know, Ice Rush or something. <laughs> It's Overwatch, man. They don't think too much about it. I'm having trouble thinking of that activity with the... Ice skating? Yeah, ice skating. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just could not think of what it was called. Luge? Well, we see both teams with the priority kind of shifts to... Going Gaul right now, they have their camp walking. They're sending some people to clear. It looks like they're clearing it out pretty fast. John Gaul not really stepping up the objective. There's not much to wait for. They're, both teams are level 17, so it's not like they can really wait till 20 necessarily. It looks like, oh, they're going to finish off top or pretty good call there. They're going to have pressure on all three lanes now. So they, they do have the advantage here to wait because their lanes are going to automatically push. Mayab getting into the back line. Isolating that Ming, teleporting out, Blaze getting back there. Nothing really connecting on her, though. Sonya, I think, still has Leap, actually. Pretty good Ice Wall onto the back line. Ooh. Oof, Blaze getting extremely low again. I feel like I've seen this a few times this game already. A huge shield oh, on him, but Rhaegar falling. Oh, and the pull's coming out. Sonya spinning around, does not have Leap. We're going to see just the Rhaegar fall in that, in that fight. Oh, that's pretty big for Happy Greg. There's no healer now on the side of... Cho and Gaul. Now's the time to push up. Yep. Sonya did leave. I want them. Yeah, I want them to be decisive here because Sonya's already gonna go push bottom and pick up that uh, uh, that EXP and possibly push that bottom keep. They haven't been able to channel it. However, the um, uh, strength of Ming being able to poke that out, as well as Mei and Zagara zoning. You know, Zagara's zoning potential right here is going to be huge. Look at their front line, just taking so much damage from that percentage-based damage at her level 16 talent. They're, they have to back off. They couldn't even channel it. Yeah, Li Ming did a really nice job of just keeping them off the point. Completely I mean, I think that was a great health. that was a great team effort. I think everybody on their team fulfilled the role. May providing the zoning for Zagara just to sit there and throw minions, which is going to just shred their front line and Ming being on the opposite side, making sure that even if they did get up to channel, she was able to use her abilities to interrupt it. And we see all five from Cho and Gaul grouping up. Oop, oh, they no. find they, con they connect. Wow, they connect uh, some CC onto the Junkrat, but he's able to get the trap down and get to safety. May not in the best position right now. However, the front line kind of hurting for Heavy Greg. Oh, well, they get some CC onto the front line of Cho and Gaul. Not a ton of damage coming out. Kind of a whiffed ice wall right there. Oh, uh, Sonya getting really low. She does have the containment disc on her. Oh, they're going to have to set up this peel really well. Mayev dashing in. Jet Propulsion does not connect with anybody. Oh. He's going to die for it. Mayev's probably going to die too. Ming picking up all the resets, getting three kills. Wow, that was a pretty back and forth engagement right there. Yeah. Tons of control. Uh, really impressive job by Cho and Gaul. I actually thought my Ev was going to go in there and start causing a ton of havoc. Um, and they were able to counter engage super well. And then Ming picked up so much value at the end there with, you know, her passive giving her those resets and that full teleport build. I just saw her teleport right on top of three heroes and her get three kills. And as we see, it looks like we're in a great position here. You know, I think the level 20 knowledge was actually level 20 advantage was a factor in that uh, engagement. I didn't see it, but I see that heavy Greg uh, is just a little bit of EXP over 20. So I'm guessing that uh, Cho and Gaul had 20 and heavy Greg did not. So that was probably the uh, one of the deciding factors in that fight. But I was going to say a little bit of a 
in a tough position for Happy Greg. They've already lost three structures, haven't been able to take one of their own. They lost their, uh, oh, I guess they, I don't know, I think they did lose their own camp to a steal there, but they were they able did. to clear it pretty fast. Oh, oh we see the shield. Oh, they really need to make a kill here, and they were able to do it. However, the counter Devouring Maw, engaging three of them. Get the Ice Wall onto the Blaze. Johanna getting extremely low, though. My, or excuse me, Maze icing getting interrupted by Joanna. That's a pretty good pickup for Heavy Greg here. They're gonna be able to clear out mid lane very quickly. Sonya's already retreating, was able to get the gate, probably some damage on that keep, not much more. Good call here from Cho and Gull, getting some damage on the bottom side keep. In fact, they could probably tank this. Oh yeah, for sure. Look at wow. them just melting through it. Yep, wow, a, a huge wave and Zagara. No problem taking out that entire keep. 100-0. Yeah. This late in the game, Zagara with all those minions. Forget about it. It looks like Brightwing's a little bit alone topside. Sonya bothering her. Not going to make anything of it, though. Sonya does have her leap out. Brightwing has somebody to blink to, though, so I guess it would be a waste at this point. We did not see Crater from Sonya. I guess that makes sense. Everybody but the front line has a way to get out of Crater on the side of Heavy Greg. Yeah, that ignore pain is actually, you know, good for her. 60% uh, damage reduction can be really big when that Maiev gets in there or when she gets isolated. Uh, no, she's not taking any chances. Otherwise, I think we see some pretty standard picks across the board in terms of level 20s. I'm not sure Zagara. about Zagara. I, I don't think that's the one, but... I don't know her well enough to know if that's the normal pickup for her at level 20. I don't really either. I mean, she's obviously, you know, summon build, percentage damage. Well, at level 7, she didn't take the infested drop or whatever the talent for that is. Ooh, we see a huge shield come out. Unfortunately, they're kind of far back. Blaze getting time stopped. Oh, Riptire not getting any value, getting killed before he could detonate it. We just basically saw a bunch of cooldowns traded back and forth between the two teams. Up, oh, and here comes Sonya leaping in, getting a triple stun. Oh, Blaze is so low. Junkrat using his trap to get out. Joanna, I don't think you're going to live, but it looks like you are. Maiev completely isolated, using containment disc. However, she's getting completely surrounded, <laughs> teleporting away. Yeah, Nothing unfortunately, <laughs> Ming can teleport too. <laughs> yeah. And without dropping a beat, they instantly start boss. With this push, it could be an end if they pick up another kill. Mid actually took a lot of damage from the Cho and Gaul's Bruiser camp. So they realistically only need one more fort to go for a win here. I'd say with one more keep and one more kill, they could definitely go for an end with this boss. Yeah, it looks like they're going to go ahead and just start chipping away at top keep. They're not wasting any time, not waiting for the boss. Just smart. They'd rather have a full health boss walking in. Oh, they're going to go for a camp steal. I think that kind of makes sense. They're still waiting for boss. They're not going to do much with that wave of minions. Zigar is kind of throwing some stuff at it. I think that's the best they could really do before boss gets there. Ming's getting blocked by the minions. My have's not up for another 10 seconds or so. Uh, it's a pretty short duration of time. Here comes the rip tire. Wow. <laughs> they dropped a lot of damage on that really quickly. And boss is still pretty healthy walking in here. If they win a team fight, and actually, it looks like Sonya was on mid that whole time. Yeah, mid, oh, and mid actually, keeps down. Actually, with that camp steal, I think that keep fell extremely quickly with that reduced armor and that camp hitting it. So they're going to settle for two keeps, you know. You know, it's not much, but they're going <laughs> go to they're gonna go to the objective. Yeah, this is a really tough spot for Heavy Greg. They have no defenses left in their lanes, no buildings. There's constant catapult pressure in every lane. Especially, well, catapult, whatever the uh, minion's called. Especially now, they start to build up real quick. Bottom lane's already building up. A fight's breaking out over the objective. Yep. We saw huge CCs come out from the side of Heavy Greg. They're sort of doing an all-in right here. However, nothing really connected. Ming did get stunned momentarily, but is now back up to full health. We see the Ancestral come out already. Leap is just now coming off cooldown. Devouring Maw onto the Joanna and Blaze, followed up by the Blizzard. Ooh, this could be nasty. Yep, I'm seeing a lot of death going on here. Joanna falling, Blaze falling. It looks like Brightwing is getting chased down, getting killed. Maiev in a similar position we just saw top. Not 
I'm not going to be able to. Oh, I spoke too soon. Going to survive a little bit longer getting killed by the auto attack from Li Ming. And all the while, they had uh, minions pushing in on their core, already at half health, already softened up for all five of Cho and Gaul to walk straight in. Oh, Junkrat can, can defend this. It's an Overwatch <laughs> thing. Here he goes. Here's the big rip tire. Is it going to kill all five? So close. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> GG. If that if that wave of force wouldn't have gone off, I would have seen a complete complete turnaround. <laughs> nope, I mean completely strong showing from Cho and Gaul here. Yeah, they uh they played a great game. You know, I, I noticed towards the end was uh he really had that uh Zagara Maw into the May Blizzard. Unlock. They landed that almost every single time that they put it out. It's a great mm -hmm. combo. Never would have think, thought to do that combo myself. It's not one that I've seen before. Yeah, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I think they missed it quite a few times, or at least I remember at least one time they weren't able to connect it properly. But, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit impressed with the Zagara Ming pairing. I think Zagara, you know, you don't really look at her as sort of a shredder, but at 16 against a Blaze and Joanna, you know, they can't, Joanna and Blaze cannot waste time eating damage from Zagara and Li Ming because they are going to die. They're going to get half health before they even know it. And I think uh, the control we see from Cho and Gaul with this comp that they picked twice in a row kind of surprised me. And, you know, probably something they've practiced or really have locked down, maybe. Yeah, the numbers don't lie. Zagara just behind Junkrat for the top, uh, top seated damage. Only behind him by... Oh. Thousand damage, almost even. Um, you know, Zagara was able to put out a ton of damage after level sixteen. Li Ming just behind with seventy three thousand damage, uh, and then Johanna surprisingly number four for damage. Hmm. Now, it was actually a lower kill count game than I than I thought it was. It's only eleven to eight. Um, yeah, I guess a lot of it happened of... at the end. <laughs> yeah, it's also a little bit even too. You know, with the with the way the map looked, you would have thought Cho and Gaul maybe dominated this game, but in the kill side, it was more controlled, 11 to 8. Yeah, you do see Maya made up five of those deaths for uh, for Heavy Greg. I think she got punished a lot by uh, Li Ming also having a teleport. I think Maya relies on her mobility, being able to get around and, and uh, you know, teleport out of the way, jump out of the way, but Li Ming is able to answer that immediately. Mm -hmm. Especially going that full teleport build, getting those defensive options, lower cooldown, longer range. I think it's a smart play for Meng into what uh, Heavy Greg picked here. Well, I'm going to see if uh, one of them wants to pop in for an interview. We will be right back. Hi there. So we are back with Tasik from Cho and Gaul Rescue Rangers. Tasik, how do you feel about the set? Really, really good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we were communicating way more than usual, and it showed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the control you guys showed with this comp, you, you picked up both teams, the Mei, Zagara, and Li Ming, with the, uh, the CC Bruiser. I think it really paid off. You guys showed, I don't know, that you have a lot of control with this comp and kind of know what you're doing. Is this something you guys have been working on or you, you think it has strong synergy? Um, the Zagara 
Li Ming Mei is not really something we practice per se. Uh, I'm just, I just know my teammates and I play Ming, uh, Li, Mei a lot, so. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting because I, I, I think a lot of synergy came out of it. You know, Mei's a very disruptive tank who can really keep heroes at bay and Ming and Zagara kind of, you know, they, they, they kind of want to just do what they want to do. They want to throw things and they want to be in the right position. Um, and I think it ended up working out, especially when Sigara hit 16, then all that damage came out of her percentage, uh, yeah. her percentage damage talent. It was, it was just huge. Definitely. So the first match, um, how, how do you guys think that game went? I think it was a pretty strong showing. You guys had a lot of control in that game. Anything uh, yeah, to comment on that, there? On the first match, I think we definitely played stronger than the second match, but it was... We just know that map inside and out. We, mm -hmm. we like we we trust Emski to do the double soaking per, uh, pretty much perfectly, and we have the four man uh, on lock on that one. And there's also just I like playing May against Joanna. Joanna doesn't have to respect the blizzards and the slows, but then they're wasting their unstoppable and they're just. Mm -hmm. uh, mine is back before theirs. Yeah, and against the enemy composition, you had uh, an opposing Vala and a Genji. It looks like Genji was trying to really get in, in there, but Vala wasn't able to catch up. Was that something you guys were communicating on, trying to, you know, manage the Genji, the Vala, the Joanna at the same time? We weren't thinking much about the the Vala. We were mostly thinking about the Genji because mm -hmm. he was very divey into the back line, and then. Uh, Saber was really good on the the polymorphs that game. And we, yeah. we were telling her beforehand, just save all of your polymorphs for him. <laughs> yeah, I think that worked out because even there was a lot of times where the poly went out and he was able to get away, but it also negated any damage he would have done. So he had to wait for another cooldown rota rotation to really um, get going again. Yeah. So I think that was a huge strength for you guys there. Moving on to the second game, um, you know, it's a really strong showing. You guys did not lose a single fort, uh, and you were able to take every structure off of Heavy Greg. Um, was that is your game plan to go in to focus on the macro, or just kind of see what happens? It wasn't until we saw what they picked. We didn't really. We're not much of a macro team, and mm -hmm. it just sort of turned out that way for this one, <laughs> because right. they they went more team fight than macro. And that's something I actually wanted to ask. So I think your guys' map bands were Garden of Terror and Cursed Hollow. And then you, I th I'm pretty sure you guys picked uh, Alteric Pass. Um, I see that as a pretty big macro, macro map, as you know, alongside Cursed Hollow and Garden of Terror. Um, was there a reason you picked that over like Dragonshire or something smaller, more, more brawl oriented? Well, we just like Alterac for the team fights. Mm -hmm. uh, they're a lot more congested and we like that <laughs> and the as far as cursed hollow there's a lot of you can ignore the objective and then have someone push and we're not good mm -hmm. at dealing with that so we just dealt with uh we deal with alterac better <laughs> That's... Yeah, and I'm just I'm just remembering. I think I got one last question, and I'll hand it over to Zeno if you have anything else. So we saw the Alarak ban both games. Is is one of your heroes in Alarak one trick, or sorry, sorry, one of your players in Alarak one trick? Uh, you actually saw all of the bans on Frank. <laughs> okay. So, the the Alarak, the Junkrat, the Vala. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, yeah. Yeah, all three of those were tar target bans and or takes <laughs> to to <Yep. laughs> to try yeah, to no. lock out Frank. And it, the, the it's always Frank obvious. Is, oh, go ahead. The thing with Frank is the she's a monster Alarak, but she's still very good at everything else. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I mean, it, it's great to have a strong, cute player like that who can play someone like Mang and Alarak. It makes it really hard for the band. And I was just gonna say, it makes it really obvious when it's a target ban when you have a map like. Um, uh, Alterac, and you see a, an Alarak ban, you know, not someone who's a global or a, or a macro oriented character. They're just so scared of that hero for yeah. good reason we, in the right got, hands. We got the one 
Alaric game earlier this season, and we're probably never going to get another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that happens. That, that can be a downside to having a great player. But again, she's really good at, at a lot of different DPS, so we're not worried. Mm -hmm. I think that's all the questions I had, Zeno. I'll hand it over to you if you have anything. Well, congratulations on your domination tonight. Do you have a MVP that you'd like to name? Um. Well, we started saying in Frank we trust, so I guess we're going with Frank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good to hear. Uh, any other shout-outs you want to give before you take off for the night? Uh, well, uh, the team the team did really well, and uh, my my typical shout-out is Frank is best girl. <laughs> that is all. I'm sure Frank will in, in, appreciate hearing it after tonight's draft. I uh, appreciate you coming out for the interview, man. You guys did great tonight. Uh, it was a blast to watch you guys play. As always, uh, we miss playing you, and I hope you guys have fun for the rest of your season. Well, that's going to do it for us, folks. Uh, hope everyone had fun. Got to see Cho and Gaul do their thing tonight. Ended in a domination. Two to nothing versus Heavy Greg. <clears throat> Every time I'm, uh, you know, casting off for the night, I like to tell everyone to get out there, play some games, get into the Nexus, uh, have fun, and support the other casters that are out there. Lots of them out there tonight. And just about every night of the week that there's games, you can get on the Nexus uh, gamingseries.org webpage and find casts or hop into the discord and see who's going to be casting at any given time um, other than that I'm Zeno that's Arlu with me and you guys have a good night good night everybody <laughs>